Welcome to this topic, Understanding Philippine Electrical Code Series 2. I'm Bernabe Salazar, your resource speaker from PractalKnowledge.com. I need not introduce myself because you heard more about me in some of the courses I offered online and offline. Let us proceed with my topic, PEC Article 1, Introduction. Let us start with PEC Article 1.0, Introduction to Philippine Electrical Code. This chapter is a prelude to better understanding the electrical code. I hope you already watched PEC Series 1, which is the overview of the Philippine Electrical Code and its structure before you continue watching this PEC Series 2. PEC Article 1.0 has 11 sections for your information and the 11 sections are the content of the entire Series 2. I have here a table showing PEC 2017 sections and NEC 2017 sections. Color blue is the PEC section and violet for NEC 2017. The titles are written in black because it has the same description for PEC and NEC. Otherwise, some description follow the color where it only exists in that code, like blue, it only exists in PEC, and violet, it only exists in NEC. Showing Article 1.0, Section 1.01.1, Purpose of the Code, related to practical safeguarding and adequacy of the electrical system and the relationship of our code to international standard. And Section 1.0, 1.2, Scope of the Code, discuss its coverage and things not covered by the code, and the NEC is special permission which is not reflected in PEC. Section 1.0, 1.3 is about the authority of the code, which we will discuss in details. Section 1.0, 1.4 is about enforcement of the code, which the details will be discussed also. Section 1.0, 1.5 is about mandatory and permissive rules. We have an explanation in PEC Series 1. You can go back to Series 1 if you haven't watched the webinar yet. It informed us of the explanatory materials we need to understand and the use of appendices. PEC Section 1.01.6 is about the interpretation of the code. Let us see its content in detail and how the code should be interpreted. PEC Section 1.01.7 is about examination of equipment for safety where you will know the agency responsible for this. PEC Section 1.01.8 is about wiring planning and the details of its preparation. PEC Section 1.01.9 is about the use of units measurement in PEC 2017. This one needs to be understood kasi we use different kinds of units. The apprenticeship in PEC Section 1.01.10 and the services of licensed electrical practitioner PEC Section 1.01.11 has no equivalent section in NEC 2017. We will discuss this also in detail and what is the meaning of this section to you. Those are the 11 sections here in PEC Article 1.0. It's just only the beginning. Let's start with the main purpose of PEC 2017. The first sections in PEC 2017 Article 1.0 is Section 1.0-1.1, Purpose. The purpose discusses the role of the code, which is to safeguard life and property. It discusses electrical design adequacy and its intention and its relationship with other international standards. In PEC 2017, there was no subsection on intention. It was mentioned in paragraph A. We will show the difference in short while. Here's section 1.01.1, paragraph A, practical safeguarding, is state that the purpose of the code is for the safety of person and property from hazards contributed by the use of electricity. Very clear, right? So, in NEC Section 90.1, Paragraph A, similar was stated. This was omitted in PEC 2017, Section 1.0, 1.1, Paragraph A. The omitted paragraph is, 
that the code is not intended as a design specification or instruction manual for untrained person. The reason is PEC separated it in section 1.01.1 paragraph C. We will discuss it later. To explain further related to practical safeguarding as the purpose of the code, the code ensures safety of people from the use of electricity, whether it's a workplace or at home. Safeguarding person by using proper PPE using warnings and training personnel involved in electrical works and awareness of electrical hazard. The code also tells us to protect life and property from the hazards of electricity. Here are the major hazards of electricity. Fire caused by thermal effect. This is the reason why we study temperature correction factor for wire beyond 3 in a conduit and the opacity of the conductor. Another is electric shock hazard. Then, the available arc plus energy in electrical system and the electrical burn or electrocution effect of not properly using electricity. Electrical practitioners should have an in-depth study of those parameters. Jan palang are another topics of a seminar that can be created, right? In continuation, let's proceed to section 1.0, 1.1, paragraph B, adequacy. PEC states in adequacy that this code contains provision that are considered minimum requirements necessary for safety and compliance therein and proper maintenance will result in an installation that is essentially free from hazards but not necessarily efficient, convenient, or adequate for good service or future expansion of electrical use. While NEC 2017 states that this code contains provision that are considered necessary for safety, Compliance therein and proper maintenance result in an installation that is essentially free from hazard, but not necessarily efficient, convenient, or adequate for good service or future expansion of electrical use. As you can see, PEC 2017 is just the same as NEC 2017 except three words, minimum, requirements, and will. This was eliminated in NEC 2017 final release to make the word simple and direct. However, we adapted it in PEC, and there's no problem with that. Adequacy means adequate electrical supply that is safe. That's the bottom line of what the code tells us. The code also tells us that electrical installation is not necessarily efficient or convenient or should not consider future load growth. What are those words mean to you as an electrical practitioner? So, it involves the right usage of electricity and the economics of present costs over the future. If you take a closer look, we are allowed to design based on the minimum requirement that is free from hazards, correct? It is an option for electrical designer to allow capacity for future load growth. Option for the convenient and efficient based on the use of electricity. Therefore, the only missing in the electrical plan that we are always encountering in the review of electrical plan is the design brief of the electrical designer. That is, the percentage he allows for future load growth. The consideration in the adoption of efficient adequate design once you are involved in the review of electrical plans, you have the right to ask for the design brief that the electrical engineers consider in the design. Because by practice, most design is above the minimum requirements, correct? For now, the term not adequate. Let us expound on it further. Hazards occur because the initial wiring provision did not provide for the increase in the use of electricity, and therefore, the wiring system becomes overloaded. You can see the picture common in a store or electric appliance at home or at home or in some offices. Provision of the increase in the load was not projected due to the changes in the activity in the use of the area. However, in my years of experience, I saw designer compute too much allowance for load growth. In terms of economic, the initial investment is high and the owner is the one shouldering all the costs. 
However, over the years, the factor on load growth was not used. Sayang lang yung initial investment. What we need to do is to design electrical system that is adequately or adequate and it should be stated in the design brief which is not included in the electrical plan. So you should ask that to the electrical designer, okay? For the term adequate electrical provision, TEC didn't push electrical designer to accommodate the increase in the use of electricity. The code just states the minimum as you can see from the figure for kitchen, dining, and electrical the electrical designer here meets the minimum requirement of the code and also added a provision in color blue if there are appliances in the dining room to be added in the future so the design considered the safe use of electricity until now the debate between adequate and not adequate are still ongoing among electrical practitioners but the code says minimum requirement only that will ensure the safety of people and property. If an electrical inspector sees some provision is lacking, they say it is non-compliance or balance of work or additional items based on the usage of the area. If the owners want additional load based on the use of the area, those requirements should always be anticipated in the design. A safe percentage or factors should be identified. Those that are not too much which affect the economics of the project but not too small a margin where it sacrifices the load growth in the coming years of operations. To continue, let us proceed to section 1.0-1.1 paragraph C, the intention of the code. The excerpt from PEC 2017 section 1.0-1.1 paragraph C, intentions of the code, PEC 2017 is for qualified person and it is intended to be his design specification, guide, and instruction manual. Let us compare the code while NEC 2017 states that this code is not intended as a design specification or an instruction manual for untrained person and PEC is intended as a design specification or an instruction manual to qualified person. As you can see, it is just the same principle. PEC uses the positive word and whom the code is intended for, while NEC uses the opposite words like the untrained person, which is also a correct argument. They pertain to the same qualified person. The code is intended to be used by those who are skilled and knowledgeable in electrical theory, electrical system, building, and electrical construction in the installation and operation of electrical equipment. I just want to reiterate and remind everyone who is watching this webinar, understanding PEC 2017 series 2, PEC is only for qualified person. A qualified person means you understand electrical terms, you study basic and complex electrical theory, you are knowledgeable about electrical safety procedures, and you are updated on electrical trade practices. PEC is not for untrained people. It is only for those qualified people. You may be RME, REE, PEE, electrical engineering student, electrical consultant, electrical contractor, insurance engineer, OBO engineers, and other trade on electrical profession. Now, Let's proceed to section 1.0, 1.1, paragraph D, relationship to other international standards. Our code says that our electrical installation follows the guide of IEC 60364-1, the fundamental principles of protection for safety. This is similar to NEC 2017, but what was mentioned in IEC 60364-1, you may ask. For the first uh, fine print notes in PEC 2017 and the first informational notes in NEC 2017, wherein the PEC address all the protection mentioned in IEC 60364-1, section 131, PEC observed in IEC in relation to protection against thermal effect, protection against overcurrent, 
protection against fault current, and protection against overvoltage. Those topics are another webinar topics to be created so that you can understand them better. This is a serious matter for a master electrician and electrical engineering student. We have completed one section, that is section 1.0, 1.1, paragraph A, B, C, D. Purpose, practical safeguarding, adequacy, and relationship to international standard. I hope you learned something today. You can watch it again for clarity. Please type your positive comment and positive criticism or suggestion if you have one for me. Congratulations, you are moving step by step in understanding the Philippine Electrical Code, but it doesn't end here. We have lots of things to do. We have uh, several parts of this series too, and we need to move on to series 2, part 2 for section 1.01.2 scope coverage of PEC and things that are not covered by PEC. It is better that we know it firsthand and uh, see you in part 2 of series 2. I'm Bert Salazar. You can subscribe to this channel to show your support for electrical profession and don't hesitate to share it to others. Thank you for watching.